Diane H. Gordon has been an inspirational speaker, Bible teacher, and mentor of women for over 25 years. Her passion when delivering the Word of God is fueled by her desire to see the people of God experience the abundant life that Christ came to give us, found in John 10.10. 10. As a photographer, she has a collection of photo art, just for His Glory prints. She also writes a spiritual encouragement blog at livingjustforhisglory.com. Diane serves in full-time ministry as the Chief Administrator and Director of Women's Ministry at St. Matthew's Baptist Church in New Jersey, where her husband, Dr. Raymond M. Gordon, is Senior Pastor. They are the proud parents of three young adults, Raymond Jr., Diamond, and Rachel. Her personal mission statement is summed up by these words, lifting, loving, living, and leading. Christian Stronghold, please stand and welcome Diane H. Gordon. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time that you have set apart before the foundation of the world for us to meet at this place. So thank you for meeting us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, anything that would, would seek to distract us from hearing from you, we put it under the blood of Jesus right now. God, I pray that I would decrease so that you would increase, so that we may hear from you, none of me and all of you. Thank you for anointing your word. Thank you for preparing our hearts so that we may receive it, our minds so that we may understand it, and our ears so that we may hear it. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Glad to have my assistant and my daughter, at least one, maybe the second one might be in the house somewhere. She's going to show through at some point. Thank you. Hosting, worship, hosting the holy God. As I begin to consider and pray about this, that your theme and the scripture, your theme scripture, I realize it's important to consider exactly what it really means to worship. Because too often we re relegate um, worship to an activity that happens or takes place on Sunday in the church or we define worship as uh, when we hit a certain experience, a certain emotional experience, or we uh, relegate worship to something that happens if the praise team sings the songs that are in our playlist. But worship, worship is to ascribe worth to the character and personhood of God. Worship has nothing to do with us. It doesn't even have anything to do with what God has done for us. It doesn't have anything to do with how we feel or what we experience. It's about who he is. It's when we stand in awe. When I think of the word awe, it means to, to be speechless. You know, with your, you know, when you're in awe of something, you drop your mouth and you just, there are no words, you're just like, well, it is to stand in awe of his goodness and his greatness and his majesty and his power and his might and sovereignty. It is to affirm, acknowledge, attest, adore, appreciate who God is, that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And as Pastor Walker, the pastor I grew up would say, he's the potentate of paradise. It is to ascribe worth. So here in Psalm 42, it is a psalm that you often see to the chief musicians and, and for the sons of Korah. Some of them says, uh, of the sons of Korah. And although it says that, really, um, the authorship is not clear. Um, it's more likely that this, um, this psalm was written for the sons of Korah, who were part of the music ministry. Um, so we don't really know who the author is. And it's expected that, you know, this is a, a, a mass scale. And so it was 
it's called, you know, it's a teaching or what they call, if, you, if, if you're a theologian, di a didactic psalm so that it, 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 it imparts wisdom and it's intended to be sung. You know, the way you know that song, Ask the Dear Panther, if I could sing, I would sing it. At, over the water brook, oh my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, right? Um, you, it, and so it, 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 many theologians, even though the authorship is not stated or clear, a lot of them attribute the uh, authorship to David because of the experiences that David had. And so it says, as the deer pants longingly for the water brook, so my soul pants longingly for you, oh God, my, my soul, my life, my inner self, thirst for God, for the living God. And so we don't know the occasion or the historical context of this psalm because it's not specified. But what we do know in this psalm is that the psalmist was in a situation and not only was in a situation, he really was in a difficult season in his life. And so the first five verses has to deal, deals with the drought that he was experiencing. And then the six, the last, the six through 11 verse deals with the, the, the feeling of being drowned, drowning. So he had a drought and then he's drowning. And, but here he gives an expression of an intense desire to be in the presence of the holy God. In fact, he makes a comparison of this intense, uh, this intense thirst for God um, and desire for God with a deer's thirst for flowing waters. You know, when a deer, a deer doesn't sweat, it pants. And some even speculate that it really doesn't, it really, um, it gets a lot of its water from its food. So some theologians speculate that this deer is really being chased by an enemy. And because he's being chased by an enemy, he's experiencing his hoofs are on fire because he's running and running from this enemy. And so he's, he's going, he's looking for some water so that he can finally get to the place that be revived and refreshed, filled and fill him with life. And so this Hebrew word for pant implies intense. It's not being thirsty. It's more like being dehydrated for God. You know, when you're thirsty, it's like, mm, I'm thirsty. But when you're dehydrated, your whole body feels it. Everything, it, your, your inner self is longing to be re, uh, refreshed. And, 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 and that's your very life. You know, you can die. You can, you can live without food. Because we got a lot to store. You know, we got stored up stuff. <laughs> but you can't live long without water. And so that's the sense, this longing and this thirsting and this panting for God that the psalmist felt. It was a, desperate, a point of desperation to host the holy God vital to survival, to life itself. That is what this psalmist was experiencing. And so uh, he feel, he, he, in the first five verses, he feels separated and distant from God. Because see, back then, they didn't have the Holy Spirit indwelt in them. And they had to go to a place. We don't realize the privilege that we as New Testament saints have. We don't recognize, you know, we forget to pray, but we don't realize what a privilege it is to just be able to say, Abba, Father, to be able to go boldly before them. We, they didn't have that. And so there's a longing in him. As very similar to Psalm 63, one says, Oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land. Imagine being dehydrated and there's no water in sight. And so as we consider the theme hosting the holy God in light of Psalm 42, can can we honestly say we have that kind of longing for God, that sense of desperation, that sense is if I don't get into his presence, I'm going to die. I just have to be honest. That's not where I live every day. I'm just saying. I know y'all holy, holier than I am, and I hope to be where you are right now someday. But that's not my, where I live every day. If I have to be honest, 
See, for that to happen, most of us need some changes yes. in our life. There yeah. needs to be a shift. Something has to happen. Something has to be different. Yes. Aren't you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Yes. Something needs to change. And if we're going to worship, acknowledge, affirm, attest, appreciate, stand in awe of who he is, if we're going to host the holy God, several things have to happen. First of all, we've got to pray for the pan. Yes. Pray for the pan. And then, and then we have to create and cultivate the climate in which that thirst can develop. The other thing we have to do is prepare our hearts to host, clean out the clutter. Then we gotta persist and practice being preoccupied with Christ by faith. We gotta commit to worship in spite of how we feel. Then sometimes you gotta put your soul on notice. You gotta have a conversation with your own soul. And if we do those things, then we're able to partake of the promises of hosting the holy God. So let me get through it, because I'm watching my time. I wanna, I, I, I wanna get through this. So here we go. We're not gonna suddenly, one morning, just wake up automatically uh, thirsting for God. Thirsting to host the holy God. We're not gonna do it. That's why we have to pray for the pant. Pray for the pan. And the reason we got to pray for the pan is because we got some longings in our soul. Yes. And you ain't got to tell nobody. Yeah. Some things don't tell nobody but God. <laughs> we got some longings in us. And some of these longings co are competing with God, a longing for God. And not only that, some of them are even in conflict with God. So we got some competing and conflicting desires. So we have to ask God. We got to be honest with God. Say, Lord, that's not where I live every day. Lord, create in me a hunger and a thirst for you. We have to cry out to God and ask him to create that longing. And that means we have to get we have to be honest and we have to get to the place where we're willing to insert that prayer in the midst of whatever else we're longing for. And, 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 and because we can't, you know, we want what we want. We don't even, you know, we don't have the power to change our own desires. So in the midst of what we, we got to be willing for God to change our desire. Or be honest and say, God, I want what I want. And I know some of this, I know it's competing. God, I wouldn't even have a desire to pray for the pen. Can you, what's that song? Do it in me? Is that old school song? Can you, can you, God, I don't even have a desire to pray for the pen. Can you give me a desire to even begin to ask you for the pen? Not only do we have to pray for the pen, but we have to create the climate for which, in order to cultivate a thirst for God. Well, how do we do that? Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your minds, our minds, our thinking needs to be changed. Uh, the Amplified says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed progressively, changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and in ethical attitudes. You know, we follow all of these influencers. The, great, the greatest influencer should be the Holy Spirit. We need a shift and make the Holy Spirit the one who influences us. Our desires and cravings have to be changed. And so in order to create that, create a climate for the thirst to develop, we pray for it and then we gotta get in the word of God to have our minds renewed, our thinking changed. We don't have the power to change. 
It is the word of God and the spirit of God that has the power to change our desires. That's why you gotta ask him. You don't have the power to change. You want what you want. You thirsty for what you thirsty for. Only God can change our, the spirit of the spirit of the living God and the word of God is what changes our desires. I remember real quickly my you know my husband liked shop right I don't and he had just had eye surgery and uh, uh, I was I had to drive and we were going to work and he said I hate shop right he loves shop right every Sunday he got a shop right story shop right and so we were going to work and he said I want you to take me to shop right my before work oh and then I got to go to work and I was like okay and I'm thinking, so I'm getting in, the, I'm going in the shower, and I'm, 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 I'm just stressing out about Shoprite. One thought, I mean, Shoprite about to take me out, and I'm like, you know, I don't like Shoprite. And then I got to go to work at before work. Are you serious? I'm going on and on, and so I, I could see where I was spiraling, and I was like, I said, Lord, you gotta help me. Because I, I felt the way about ShopRite. Nothing was going to change how I felt about ShopRite. But Jesus. And I felt something. I, would, I said, Lord, you got to help me. And that's, that's all I said. I was like, Lord, you got to help me. Help me think your thoughts. And all of a sudden, the song came. I give myself away. So you... Uh, so you could use me. Amen. I just started singing it and I started crying. And God had changed my, he, he did what I couldn't do. That's why you gotta pray for the pant. I had no power, ShopRite had power over me. But God, who's rich in mercy. And so it is the word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And as a discerner of the thought, I don't even know what's in my heart, but God, the word of God can discern my motivations. The Amplified says the word, of, the word of God is alive and active, full of power, making it operative. We got to allow the word to do surgery because our soul, which has our, per, our personality and our will and is the seat of our emotion, it, it, it gets wrapped up in our old nature. It, gets, it reconnects itself to the old nature and our fleshly desire, so it's the word of God that has to cut the soul away from that mess. You know what I'm saying? Shot right, I was hooked up. My soul and all of my emotions was tied up to my old nature. But I asked God and he used the song to get my soul back, align with the new nature, with his nature. Okay, so it is, it's the word of God. 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says, but we with all open face beholding as in the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. We have nothing obstructing our vision of Christ and his glory as revealed in the scripture. And so as we continue to gaze into this word, not glance, gaze. You, you know, when they talk, when, when in 27 it says, so I can inquire into the Lord, that means stoop down and really see. You know, like when you stoop down, you really want to see what's in there. Gazing into him. And so as we look at who Christ is in his word, we see his glory and his majesty and his mighty power and his holiness and so as we gaze the same the spirit of God begins to take the, the gazing and that word that we have been meditating upon and he begins to transform us so that we begin to look like him What's looking like him means that we begin to have the desires that Christ has you know that we gaze as we gaze it's the spirit and the word of God that can change our hearts. You know, when you mad at somebody, even though you know you shouldn't be mad, you still mad. And you'll be talking to God like, I, Lord, I'm, 
I know you said to forgive, but I'm ticked. I'm feeling some kind of way. I'm feeling some kind of way. I'll tell you, put a pin in it. If I can have time, I'll tell you another story how he can do that. But, but, and, so, and so we don't have the power. It is the word of God and the spirit of God that can make you not be mad. You know, because this is what we do. You know, we have a, a holy woman of God, but you got your limits. This is how you know when, what you're limiting. When you start your sentence like this, I tell you right now. <laughs> this is what we do. I love you. Lord, I love the Lord. And blah, blah, blah. And he's, my, he's my all in all, but I tell you right now. That means I don't care what God says. This is my limit. Y'all don't talk like that, right? You're going to remember the next time you say, I tell you right now. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. Not only do we have to pray for the pant and create the climate, that word of God, so that the thirst for God can develop, we got to prepare our hearts to host the holy God. Clear out the clutter. clutter. You know, what would happen? So let's just say you got a text. And the text said, Michelle Obama is coming through Philadelphia, and she decided she's coming to your house. Well, you'd be like, I got, sorry, Sister G, I'm out of here. I got to go clean my house because Michelle's coming by. I'm going to be hosting Michelle Obama. What would you do? You're going to call everybody, come, come on, so that you could clean the... Not that you, I know your house is already clean. I'm just saying. I would have to clean some clutter. Clean up, right? And we got to do the same thing. We got some clutter in our souls. We got a host, we're trying to host God, but we got some clutter. We can't affirm and acknowledge and attest to the greatness of God because our mind, hearts and minds are cluttered, cluttered with despair. Cluttered with depression, cluttered with distractions, cluttered with devastating circumstances, cluttered with just everyday, daily living, life, cluttered with disappointments. And so in the midst of the clutter, we try to, you know, we try to carve out a little bit of Sunday that we can give God some kind of worship. But the truth be told, we can't, we're not ready to host because we're, it's, our souls are cluttered. Our emotions are tied up with stuff, with stuff that, in situations we can't see our way out of. So we're going to stand in awe of him. We've got to clear out the clutter. Psalm 42, verses 3 and 4 says, My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in thee. Mm. Psalm 62, 8 says, Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge. We got to be willing to clear out the clutter. We got to pour, you, we got to say, God, we got to say, God, I'm depressed and I'm devastated. I'm hurt. We got to pour that stuff out so that we can truly host him, so that we can truly focus and concentrate, for, forget about ourselves, concentrate on him and worship. But I can't, let me pour, I got to pour out. He says, pour it out. No better example of pouring out your soul than Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1. You got to go read it. You know, Hannah is described as was in bitterness of soul. You know, she, could, she was barren and, 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 and her husband's other wife was taunting her. It's like, hmm? Because she wasn't. And so Hannah said she was in bitterness of soul. And so she prayed unto the Lord. And she says that she wept sore. That didn't mean she took out a tissue. That means she was like, I, I, you ever had a good cry, a good cry? A, a good cry is farting. Like, the, the, I only had them in the shower when nobody could hear me. Like, the, <laughs> like I'm panting. <laughs> like that, where, and the water's running, so it doesn't matter. I can just wipe my, <laughs> I don't need it. To, that, that, she wept sore. And so much so 
that the man of God, God thought she was drunk because she was, her mouth was moving, but nothing was coming out. She just, she was pouring it out because you can imagine she was like, no, I'm not drunk. I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit, but I have poured out my soul. She, you know, I describe Hannah as wringing her soul out before the Lord. She was had bitterness, I'm sure, and anger and rejection. You know, back, I told you back at, like in Philly, I grew up in South Philly, and so back then, you know, we didn't have um, fancy wipes and sponges that we bought. We use old t-shirts to clean up. And you know, when you, you, you when your mother was instructing you, she said, now wring all that water out. You had to put, dip the rag back in and wring it out. That's what Hannah was doing. I'm bitter. You know, you, kept, you keep wringing it. You shake it out to re- keep wringing it. I'm angry and I'm rejected and I feel ridiculed. I feel abandoned by you, God. I feel disappointed. Bring out your soul before whatever you got going. Even some stuff you know shouldn't be in your soul. Just pour it out before God. Bring that soul out. And after she poured out her soul, she rose up early. And guess what she did? She worshiped. Psalm 34, 7 that says, this poor man cried and heard him and the Lord saved him, bringing out our souls. We're going to be women who worship and host the holy God. Not only do we have to pray for the plant, create and cultivate the climate for the thirst to develop, we got to prepare our hearts to host, clear out the clutter, wring out our souls before God. But then we also have to persist and practice being preoccupied with Christ. That means that I don't care how you feel, you got to commit to worship. Because Amen. Amen. worship has nothing to do with you or how you feel. It has to do with affirming and attesting and acknowledging and adoring and appreciating God for, God for who he is. So take your eyes. We gotta learn to take our eyes off of our situation and ourselves. And we gotta look to the hills from whence cometh our help. We gotta, in spite of how we feel, after you pour out your soul and you still feel crazy, you gotta say, God, but you're good. And you're great. And you're holy. You're in a class all by yourself. You're sovereign. And you're, you, I see the exceeding greatness of your power. I appreciate that your love is everlasting. And you're mighty. And you're a great high priest. And you're acquainted with all of my grief. God, you're good. And your mercies endure forever. You're King of kings and you're Lord of lords. And Lord God, you are the potentate of paradise. There's none like you, oh God. I still feel crazy, but God, you're still good. You're still on the throne. You're at the right hand of the Father, ever making an intercession for me. And God, you're good and you're faithful and you're perfect and you're you're great and you're majestic and you're holy and you're wonderful and your ways are beyond finding out. God, you're worthy to be praised. You're bigger than my feelings, God. Oh God, it's you and you alone who are worthy. I'm, con- I'm reminded in Hebrews, you know, we got to be like Jesus, what he did. What he did in Hebrews 2, he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, Jesus knew the cross was going to first, the, at the cross, that for the first time he would be separated. The fellowship would be broken because God the Father is too holy to even look upon sin. And when we put all of our stuff on him, God the Father would have to. And so Jesus knew that. But what he did, he looked past that. It said for the joy. What he did, he saw the joy that he would have after he got up from the grave. He saw the joy that he would get have when he saw me walking in the newness of life. Oh, he said he would endure the cross and despise the shame because I'm looking past that because I see Diane down there walking in the newness of life. I see 
be giving her the exceeding greatness of my power. I see that. And so I'm over I'm, I'm looking at the joy. I look past the pain and I'm gonna look at the joy. We gotta worship. Look past the disappointment. Look past the disgrace. Look past the discouragement. Look past the depression and see God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or even think of according to the power that's working on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Worship God. Commit. Persist. Pursue. Keep pressing. Be preoccupied with him. And I'm learning. You know, the Bible's clear. He said, speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I'm finding that all week long I was like, I kept kept my mind on him by saying, as the deer pant to go. I just kept singing that. It just brings you back. Keeps you focused on him and not on my stuff. Gets the needle off of me and on to him who's worthy. I, I, look, at, if go home and read Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? David was running for his life. He was, he was, he was separated from, he couldn't get to the temple. He couldn't get to the tabernacle. He was separated. He was running for his life. But he didn't focus on his fears. Whom shall I fear? He didn't focus on his foes. Even when my enemies, even my foes came upon me, they stumbled. He didn't focus on his fears. He didn't focus on his foes. He didn't even focus on his fight. He didn't focus on his freedom. He didn't ask for deliverance. He said, one thing I desire, and that will I seek after. I I just want to be in your presence. That's it. I just want to worship. I, I, saw, I don't need deliverance. I just want to worship. I'm going to pursue and persist in being in his presence. If we're going to be women who worship, hosting the holy God, not only do we have to pray for the pain, create and cultivate the climate for the thirst to develop, we have to prepare our hearts to host the holy God, clear out the clutter, pour out your souls before him. We gotta persist and practice being preoccupied with Christ, commit to worship in spite of how we feel. We have to, sometimes you gotta put your own soul on notice. You gotta have, be willing to have a, so, a conversation with your own soul. See, your faith propels us, tells you that you need to worship, but your feelings be pulling you back. Sometimes I used to, I, don't, I sit in the second row, but I honestly, I can't tell you that my soul, my soul had, I, my soul was wrapped up in some feelings to that old, it wasn't, but my faith said, no, you got to worship. And you gotta, you gotta lift up your hands in spite of how you feel. Even though your heart is overwhelmed, you gotta just give, give me the glory. That's my faith. But so you gotta talk to your soul. In Psalm 42, five, he said, I'm just gonna say, it sounds like David to me. He looked at his own soul, his faith turned around to his soul because he was feeling some kind of way. He says, he look, he's having a conversation with his own soul. He says, why are you so cast down? Oh, my soul, why are you disquieted in me? Why are you restless and disturbed? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of it. You gotta put your soul on notice. Look, you can pout all you want, but God is worthy. So you see, eventually, when you start, when you start putting your soul on notice, and you stop, stop, when you stop operating, when we stop operating based on our feelings, and start operating based on our faith, you can, your, your faith will start talking to your soul while your soul's sitting down here pouting and saying it ain't going to church. But your faith keeps moving anyhow. Your soul say, here's what your soul says. Well, let me get myself together, and then your soul. That, that, that's what happens because the Holy Spirit fixes your soul and realigns it with your faith. You don't have the power to change how you feel, but if you start operating based on, based on your faith and not your feelings, 
your soul's going to catch up with your faith because that's what the Spirit of God is going to do. Don't worry about being depressed. Yeah, we depressed. Don't worry about being broke. Give the 20 cents you got in your pocket to God and said, I believe you. That's faith. Oh God, my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the Hermonite, Hermonites and from the hill of Massar, where I used to meet you. I'm going to remember that. Talk to your own soul. I'm sick and tired of being, I'm not fooling with you. I'm going to worship God because he's good and he's great and he's majesty and he's holy and he's power and he's sovereign and he's got my best interests at heart and no weapon formed against me shall prosper and greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world you gotta affirm who he is he's worthy no matter how you're feeling he's worthy you can acknowledge pour it out I'm disgusted and I'm dejected and I'm frustrated and I can't seem to get it together God and I'm sick and tired of everybody else around me getting on my last nerve God I tithe and I prayed and I, I tithe and I fasted and I laid prostrate before you and I'm just it's still the same but God, you're still holy. God, you're still worthy. God, you're still perfect. God, you're still light. You're still love. You're still goodness. You're still peace. You're still my hope. You're still my rock. You're still my fortress. You're still my stronghold in the time of trouble. Oh, God, thank you that you know them, that put their trust in you. Oh, God, you're still worthy. Oh, yes, I'm still depressed. But God, who's rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved me, even when I was dead in trespassing, said, God, you're mighty. Listen, I don't care what you're going through. God knew it. When we're going through, God does not have to call an emergency staff meeting in heaven. He doesn't have to say, God the Father doesn't have to say, Jesus, get up over here. Holy Ghost, come on. Diana got herself in a mess. No, because the foundation of the world, whatever situation I'm in, he dispatched from heaven the grace that I would need for my dilemma. I already got it. Before he said, let there be light, he wrapped up that special design, custom design, grace for my dilemma, and he threw it out, boom, from eternity. And all I'm doing is waiting for my situation to catch up with my grace. I'm just walking through it. And I'm not walking alone. He's walking with me. And goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life. And then I'm going to walk into my grave. Boom. Yes. That's why we worship him. Because he's that kind of God. There's none like him. Oh, not at all. In spite of all of our weaknesses and shortcomings and broken promises, God is still good. Have that conversation that your faith have a conversation with your own soul. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I will bless the Lord. I will look to the hill. The Lord is great. He's mighty. He's good. He's righteous. He's the lifter up of my head. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If we pray for the man, if we pray, God created me a hunger and thirst for you. And we create a, and cultivate a climate for our thirst to develop. Yes. And we prepare our hearts to host the holy God by clearing out the clutter, ringing out our souls before God. And if we persist 
and practice being preoccupied with Christ and commit to worship in spite of how we feel. And if we're willing to put our souls on notice, have a conversation with our own souls and operate based on faith and not how we feel, then we can partake of the promises of worship, hosting the holy God. There's fullness of joy. Thou will show me the path of life in thy presence is the fullness of joy. Psalm 1611. Not only do we have joy, but we have hope. Psalm 16, 8 and 9 says, I have set the Lord before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth, and my flesh also shall rest in hope. There is joy and there is hope. Yes. And there is strength. Our strength is renewed. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We can partake of and experience the fullness of joy and hope and renewed strength and peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Not only is there fullness of joy and hope and renewed strength and peace, there's refreshment. Proverbs 3, 7, be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord. That's me, stand in awe of him, be left speechless, and depart from evil, and it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Not only is there joy, hope, renewed peace, renewed strength and peace, there is safety and security. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And you know, we like to quote Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is not for the casual worshiper. It's not, no, 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 no. You don't get the benefits of Psalm 91. You don't get all what everything, with all the violin, the, 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 the noise, the pestilence. And all. You don't get all of that just because you come to worship on Sunday and give God 20 minutes or 30. You get this when you have intimate, when you dwell. When you dwell in worship. When you dwell in his presence. When, you, when, when somebody's getting on your last nerve, you ask God to do something, to change my think, help me think your thoughts. When, you, when, when there's intimacy, because you, you know, intimacy comes from, comes from spending time. That's what the, this is not for the, Psalm 91 is not for the casual worshipers. This is for the certified worshiper. This is, this is for the one who practices worship. This is for the one who is practicing being preoccupied with Christ. And, you, and, and, it's, and, and it's not automatic. You got to work. You know, I, I, there's probably, we think, I, I, I used to know the number, but I'm, there's well over 50,000 thoughts that we think in a day. Can you imagine? You got to ask God to help you think his thoughts. That's why, that's, that's why the Bible says speak to yourself. Keep talking to yourself with psalms and hymns because all these thoughts are coming at you. That's what psalms, so you, gonna, if you want to do it, it's for the, it's, it's for the, it's for the professional. Practicing. Certified. Worshiper. You know, you, you can't get, you can't get, you, you got to have hours and hours to be certified in anything. You got to have, you got to have credentials where you spend time. So ladies, let's pray for the pan. Prepare our hearts to host. Clean, pra persist in practicing being preoccupied. Put our souls on notice. Have a conversation with your own soul. You know, sometimes you got to stop fooling with your own soul. I ain't fooling with you. I'm, I'm not fooling. I'm going to worship. And then we get to partake of, his, of being in his presence, hosting him. Fullness of joy. Rest. Rest in hope. Strength will be renewed. Perfect peace. Refreshment. And safety and security. So come. Let us worship him. Let us bow down before him. Simply, simply because he's worthy. Everybody, please stand to your feet. I was wondering if there was anybody in the room 
that feels bold enough to act like you don't see the person next to you and say, God, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. My marriage is falling apart. Singleness isn't working for me. School is not working for me. Oh, man, ministry is driving me crazy. I don't know where I fit. Why am I even here? Why am I even breathing? Is there anybody in here that is like me that sometimes just is exhausted? The cooking, the cleaning, the tending to, the work, the smiling all the time. The, we wear a mask when we step outside and hi, how you doing when inside? We're broken, we're lost. We don't know what's going on. Is there anybody bold enough to step out here with me and come to the altar and bring it to God? Anybody? Because I'm like you. Just because I'm standing here, I'm no different. I get tired. I get exhausted. Sometimes I want to throw in the towel. Sometimes, I, I, God, I'm not worthy. You got me praying and singing and you got me married? Uh, I'm single am I really satisfied come on my children I don't know what to do with them molestation rape it's all been a part of my life are you one saying that today I want it all to go away anybody in here The pillows are here so that you can kneel before him if you can get to one. It's not about what anybody sees or how people know you. Right now, we in the presence of God. Rip off the mask. Be vulnerable in his presence. Lord, we lift our eyes to you for where our help comes. For our home, all our help comes from you. God, we, we thank you that no matter where you find us in Psalms 139, if we make our bed in hell, you said you'd be there. You said when our mothers and fathers would forsake us, you said then, oh God, you said you'd make a difference. When the wicked and even the enemies and my foes come up against me to eat up my flesh, God, you said you would be there. You said you would be our shepherd. You see, said you'd be our light in a dark place. Oh God, we need you. Every hour we need you. And based on the fact that you said you would always be there. And the fact that we know that you love to hear us come to you. We're here panting by the water. Needing for you to fill this thirsty soul of ours. We're dehydrated, God. We're dehydrated. We, we don't know what else to do, my God. We don't know what else to do. Fix it, Jesus. And we know that it may not happen overnight. That everything happens in your time. So that husband, that child, that job, that ministry, that, that, that bad attitude that we have that we're trying to shake. The inability to hear others when they're in trouble. All of those things that we've got, that mess in our basement, God, we know that in time, through prayer and supplication, and through fasting and prayer, God, we know that you will pull all of that up. You will need the ground so that good soil can take the place of where the bad is so that we can grow properly in you. So now, God, we give you praise. Come on, ladies. We give you glory. Come on, ladies. We give you honor. <laughs> El Shaddai, we worship you. We magnify you, oh God. For you alone are worthy. For you alone are precious. For you alone are our way maker. We honor you to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give it to him. Hallelujah. That situation. Through it, glory, 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 glory. This 
isn't the end for you. This is the beginning. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Adonai. Elohim. Yahweh. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Shalom. Oh, we worship you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Give it to him. Hallelujah. In your praise. Give it to him. Hallelujah. 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 Fix it for him, God. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, O God. For you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. Now, when you go back to your seat, it's going to be hard. Let's keep it real. Whatever it is that is ripping you apart, I need you to do this, if not in your mind, with your hands. Rip it off of you. Rip it off and walk back to your seat. And know that everywhere your feet tread, you have dominion. Everywhere your feet tread, you have rip it off. Rip it off. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.